Hello viewers, welcome to this video lecture series on analysis and design of algorithms. This session I shall discuss on quicksort algorithm. Quicksort algorithm makes use of the divide and conquer approach. Look, let us trace the algorithm here in this session. I have written the code for the algorithm here. Quicksort algorithm starts from here. Quicksort, you are passing three parameters A, L and H. After that you are checking one condition if L is less than H. Then immediately the next statement is J equal to partition of L comma H. So this partition, this algorithm is defined here. So the main, main uh, part of this algorithm is the partition algorithm. And in the partition algorithm, you are going to run these lines of code. Let us carry out the dry run for this algorithm. How exactly it works. Now before exactly carrying out the tracing, let me first show you what is the logic used here. Suppose if these are the elements 45, 68, 76, 35, 41, 9, 25. The algorithm makes one element as the pivot element here suppose if you are taking the first element as the pivot element normally you can take the first element as the pivot element or the last element as the pivot element or randomly you can choose any element as the pivot element but once you execute the lines of code what exactly it happens is the pivot element is placed at the center that means before the pivot element you have all the elements which are having a lower value than 45 and all the elements which are having greater than 45 will be towards the right side of the pivot element. So in our example you may get for 35, 41, 9 and 25 all the elements that are there towards the left side of the pivot element are smaller than the pivot element but it may not be in the ascending order. First we are bringing all the elements lesser than the pivot element towards the left side and all the elements towards the right side of the pivot element are higher. So this also will not be in the ascending order. Later you have to apply the quicksort algorithm that means you are dividing the array here into two parts first part of the array and this is the second part of the array. You will apply the quicksort to the first part of the array again you will apply the quicksort to the second part of the array. You keep dividing like this until you get one one element in each array that means whatever single elements from the each array you get at the end will be the elements that are in the ascending order. So let us trace this pseudo code. See the algorithm starts from here at quick sort. You are passing three parameters A which is the array and L and H. L and H are the variables that are pointing to the first and the last element of the array and you are checking the condition whether L is less than H. So when you are pointing to the first and the last index element L and H. L is 0 and H is 8 the index value. Here in the if condition you are checking whether L is less than H whether 0 is less than 8. Yes it is true if it is true the next line is J equals to partition A comma L. So that means now the control will go to the partition algorithm and the partition algorithm is written over here. So will what is the first line in the partition algorithm A of L you have to make it as the pivot element. So we have assigned here the pivot element as 10 and it is A of L. A of L is 10 here. So 10 is your pivot element. The next line is I equal to L. I is assigned to L and J is assigned to H. So now in place of L and H we will be using the variables I and J. So now we will check the next line whether I is less than J. See I is 0 and 0 less than j is 8 0 less than 8 yes it is true if it is true then the while loop gets executed in the while loop you are checking whether a of i is less than or equal to the pivot a of i is here 10 so a of i is 10 whether that is less than or equal to whether 10 is less than or equal to the pivot element pivot element is 10 only yes it is true pivot element is 10 here so a of i is also 10 Yes, if it is true, then increment the value of i by 1. So now i will be pointing to the next one. And once again, the while loop gets executed. Now a of i is how much? a of i is 18. Whether 18 is less than or equal to 10, no, the condition is false. If the condition is false, it will come out from this while loop and it will enter the next while loop here. And basically what is here in the structure of the partition is you have one while loop here another while loop here and another if statement here that means these three one while loop second while loop and the third if statement these three statements are inside this outer while loop outer while loop condition is while i less than j but inside you have two while loops and one if statement so first time you started with the very first while loop when the condition became false 
it will go to the next while loop and in the next while loop you are checking a of j is greater than pivot or not you check here a of j is what a of j is 4 whether 4 is greater than 10 no the condition is false if the condition is false it will come out and it will go to the if statement here and in the if statement you are checking whether i is less than j now i value is 1 and j value is 8 1 is less than 8 yes it is true if it is true then you need to swap a of i and a of j once you swap here you will get 4 and here it will be 18 so now i is pointing to 4 and j is pointing to 18 and the remaining elements will be as it is so in the process of making this elements which are lesser than the pivot element towards the left side and the elements which are greater than the pivot element towards the right side you need to swap like this by checking the condition that means you are bringing all the smaller elements towards the left side and all the greater elements towards the right side so now your 4 has come here and 18 has gone to the right side i is pointing to 4 and j is pointing so once you finish this swapping it will go back to the outer while loop and in the outer while loop you are checking the condition whether i is less than j what is the value of i now i is 1 and j is 8 so whether 1 is less than 8 yes it is true if it is true then it will enter into the while loop you are checking a of i less than or equal to pivot a of i is how much here 4 but 4 is less than or equal to 10 yes it is true if it is true increment the value of i by 1 now, i which was earlier pointing to 4 now i will point to 9 we'll go back and check once again the while loop statement a of i is less than or equal to pivot now a of i is 9 whether 9 is less than or equal to 10 yes it is true if it is true increment the value of i by 1 then i will now point to 13 then once again it will go back and check this while loop a of i less than or equal to pivot here a of i is 13 whether 13 is less than or equal to 10 no the condition is not true it will come out from this while loop and it will enter into the next while statement here here you are checking whether a of j is greater than pivot a of j is 18 now 18 greater than 10 if it is true then you have to decrement the value of j by 1 so now j will be pointing to 8 we will go back and check once again this while loop statement a of j greater than pivot a of j here is 8 8 greater than 10 no the condition is false if the condition is false it will come out and execute this if statement and in the if statement you are checking whether i is less than j i is how much here i is 3 ok the index value j is 7 3 less than 7 yes the condition is true if the condition is true then swap a of i and a of j a of i is 13 and a of j is 8 in place of 13 8 will be appearing and in place of 8 13 will be appearing and the remaining will be as it is okay once this swap statement is getting completed it will go back to the outer while loop in the outer while loop it will start checking the condition again so outer while loop statement is i less than j i value is now 3 and uh, j value is 7 whether 3 less than 7 yes it is true if it is true then inside the while loop a of i less than or equal to pivot a of i is 8 here whether 8 is less than or equal to 10 yes it is true if it is true increment the value of i by 1 so i will now point to 16 once again it will go back to this while loop only and it will check a of i is less than or equal to pivot a of i is 16 here whether 16 is less than or equal to 10 no the condition is false if it is false then it will come out and it will execute the next while loop here and in the next while loop you are checking a of j greater than pivot a of j is 13 whether 13 is greater than 10 yes it is true if it is true then decrement the value of j by 1 so now j will point to 5 once again this while loop will get con because the condition was true no as long as the condition is true the while loop keeps executing a of j is 5 now whether 5 is greater than 10 no the condition is false if the condition is false it will come out and execute the if statement in the if statement you are checking whether i is less than j i is 4 and j is 6 whether 4 is less than 6 yes it is true if it is true then you swap a of i and a of j so basically what when you are swapping is what is happening is i value is getting incremented every time whenever elements are lesser than the pivot element whenever it finds an element which is greater than the pivot element it stops j pointer will get decremented as long as it finds all the elements greater than the pivot element the moment it finds an element which is lesser than the pivot element it stops 
so when both these pointers get stopped the pointer values are checked here that is the index value of i and j is checked if it is less then the elements will get swapped so you are bringing to the right positions the elements by swapping so we'll continue here so we were here now the if statement if i value is 4 and uh, j value is 6 so 4 and 6 that element pointed by 4 and 6 will get swapped a of i and a of j will get swapped in place of 16 5 will appear and in place of 5 16 will appear and the remaining elements will be as it okay after this swap once again the control will go to the outer while loop here i value is here how much 4 index value and j value is 6 whether 4 is less than 6 yes it is true if it is true it will enter into the first while statement in this while statement you are checking whether a of i is less than or equal to pi what a of i is 5 here 5 less than or equal to 10 yes the condition is true then increment the i value by 1 now i will point to here next once again since the condition was true it will check again a of i is less than or equal to pi what here we have 7 now a of i whether 7 is less than or equal to 10 yes it is true if it is true then increment the value of i by 1 now i will point here as the condition is true it will come back and execute a of i a of i is less than or equal to pi what now a of i is 16 whether 16 is less than or equal to 10 no it is false if it is false it will come out from this while loop and it will enter into the next while loop here and here in this statement you are checking whether a of j is greater than pi what now a of j is 16 16 is greater than 10 yes it is true if it is true then dec decrement j value by 1 now j will point to 7 the condition is true so once again it will check whether a of j is greater than pi what a of j is 7 whether 7 is greater than 10 no it is not true it is false it will come out and it will execute the next if statement here in the if statement you are checking whether i is less than j i is how much here now i is 6 and j is how much 5 whether 6 is less than 5 no it is not true so for the first time now in carrying out this dry run we found the if statement to be false if the if statement is false then it will come out of this loop and it will execute the next statement here the next statement is swap a of l with a of j okay a of l is what initially only you have assigned here in the statement a of l is the pivot element that means the very first element is your a of l so this a of l will get swapped with a of j what is a of j a of j is 7 a of l is 10 now these two elements will get interchanged in place of 10 it will be 7 and in place of 7 it will be 10 and the remaining elements will be like this only as it is so after these many iterations we were able to bring this 10 here the pivot element in its place that means why i am telling in its place is now you just continue the dry run code what it does is after you swap a of l with a of j the next statement is return j swap a of l and a of j and return the value of j j is how much here j is the pointer value which is 5 now, the partitioning algorithm gets completed here and it will go back to the main module since the array got divided into two parts now you have to call the quicksort algorithm first time you will call the quicksort algorithm with the starting index as l and ending index as j minus 1 second time you will call the quicksort algorithm again with the starting index j plus 1 and ending index h so this is what you have brought the pivot it is your j return j so the array got divided into two parts now so once again you will apply the quicksort algorithm to the first part of the array and with the starting pointer as l and ending pointer as j minus 1 and second time you will call the quicksort algorithm first pointer is starting pointer is j plus 1 and the ending pointer is h now you got 7 4 9 8 5 as one array and 16 13 18 as the second array now you don't have to worry anything about this element 10. 10 10 has come to its right place now your job is to sort this array and this array so you will apply the quick sort as i said to this array you will apply the quick sort to this array keep doing this as long as you get one one element in each array and you will find the elements in this order 4 5 7 8 9 and the position for the element 10 is already decided so it will be here only and uh, from the second part of the array also when you keep dividing you will get one one element from each array and it will be at the end like this 
so if you observe now the list of elements at the end it will be in the sorted order. this way the quick sort algorithm works the time efficiency for this algorithm I need to explain as the session is becoming too long I will continue with the time complexity for the quick sort algorithm in the next session and in that session I will explain about the best case worst case and average case for the quick sort algorithm hope you find this session helpful please like share and subscribe to my channel thank you bye bye and take care